and we'll just pluck the next shit. Allies. Ah, the French. So we can continue with the French chit. Of course, we have to charge the French light cavalry against the guards that have just pushed away the French infantry. Probably not a great charge, but it is one that they have to undertake. So we're going to throw each of our regiments at them. I'm never clear, when are the opponents permitted to react to charging cavalry? At the declaration of the charge or when they actually start to move? I usually make them start to move before they can react. So, since these guys are not in the line of sight, I'm going to let them crash right into here. No chance to um, form square. But I think they have to try to stand just like that. But being guards, they pass their role to stand. So we'll close those chasseurs and move to the next. Now these guys are also going to be coming out of the line of sight. So when they cut over in front of this unit, they're going to charge. And I don't like my chances of forming square, so I'm going to go ahead and meet that charge and try to stand. Of course, with their excellent morale, they do stand. So we'll advance those light horse and also await melee, and that's our last now we go to our last, which are these Lancers here. They are going to target that battalion. They will also attempt to stand in their current order. And they also succeed. So we will charge on that last attack. Now none of these are three hex uh, Three hexes in a line, so none of them will have the doubling bonus in melee. But we'll proceed to our melee phase, which is first defensive fire and then actual melee. Now this unit can't fire because he's in the flank. These two fired. This inflicted one casualty. This attack inflicted two. Those are some good, good shots on those horses as they come in. Now we'll just uh, proceed to the melee. This first attack here in the flank is obviously going to be a really big advantage. And we roll a defender route. So, ooh, that's going to hurt. They don't have any place good to route. I'm having a hard time <laughs> seeing anything for them to do except run right off the board. So yeah, I think those guys are going to lose an increment. Not that it matters, and they're chased right off the board. I hate that. That's the risk. That was a risk I took. So that'll be completion of the charge by marking them exhausted and occupying the hex. Don't think the French are going to be as uh, successful in the other attacks here. And the next attack here, is one and a half to one odds, we achieved a one slash one. So each side takes a casualty and then that'll end the charge. So that's actually a fairly good outcome for the British, given they just saw their compatriots run right off the board. Final attack. At one to one odds, it comes up with a blank. That's going to be a bounce for the French cavalry. Which those lancers are finally.
taking a beating. They have lost five increments now. They have to retreat and take a morale check, which they do pass. So they will just finish right here, exhausted. So, a middling charge. Pretty good. They ran one battalion off the field, but it did cost them a lot of increments here. And since that's the only cavalry that's really in any position to charge, we'll just call an end to our charge phase and move into movement. Starting at Lenny, and yes, that did come under just 10 minutes. We just moved the 4th Cavalry Division, 4th Corps Cavalry Division over here. No movement of the Reserve Cavalry, they had no command points. Continue to shift 4th Corps to the east, making room. Got a lot of the guard artillery right here. The young guard there. Try to move the guard grenadiers. The, the fourth, the third corps rather, is shifting to the west. Eighth division is moving away, though they sort of abandoned several units here that are stuck in um, the zones of influence. Same thing for the twelfth division. Just going to. Uh, Hopefully dislodge that unit and restore everybody to command. But the 8th Division is kind of going to become the reserve here as the 11th and 10th remain engaged with the Prussians there. Here at Quattro Bra, things may be changing fast. A number of units out of command here were unable to close the gaps in the line here of the Pressed 5th Division. They're in a little bit of trouble right now. We'll see what their fire phases are able to accomplish for them. In the center of the crossroads, the 9th Division is trying to consolidate, going to assault these two units and see if they can clear them out. That would be a big help to uh, holding that position. But to the far West here. We had no command point, so the 6th Division is in <laughs> danger of getting enveloped. Mm, I'd hate to uh, to lose all these units, especially this one, that's a 5 increment battalion. But um, there, the gamut with the guards is paying off. Maybe a little late, but they're getting there. So with our movement completed, we can move on to fire phases. Fire phases were reasonably effective for both sides, starting here on the east side. See those horse guns are doing a little more damage to the um, 12th Brigade Lanvera there. Shift herself over to the main line here at Ligny. See a lot of casualty markers. All those white markers mean fire combat casualties. We also had a um, number of morale check failures. Here in particular, this unit was surrounded and therefore surrendered. 
had a French retreat and then had some Prussians retreat over here including some cascading retreats by the Lanvers. So fairly good fires here. Here at Bra, we had a very healthy exchange of gunfire here including these point blank guns against the Highlanders. Another casualty inflicted here was a last increment for that British battalion. Another one here. So these assaults are probably going to, well obviously this one's going to succeed, but that one's going to be probably very effective. Moving down the line. Some uh, retreats here by the Brunswickers in response to um, some casualties. But plenty of casualties on the French as well as they were starting to get whittled away. Down here in this little corner, the French are in really bad shape, taking losses, inflicting some, but not really being able to um, extricate themselves. So they're just taking it from all sides. So we'll move on to the melee phase. The only assaults are here at Quatre So this first one here will just take the text since that uh, Unit was destroyed in fire. I think we'll advance this battalion. Now we'll con uh, conduct the melee here. This unit is being hit in the flank. Only one increment remains. They're being attacked by four increments. So, four to one odds. Hmm. And mercifully, the Brits do fail their pre-melee morale check. That's really the best thing that could happen. Better to retreat and try to fight again rather than be destroyed. So they will disorder and retreat. And we will have that French unit advance into the hex. So the French are firmly in control of the crossroads. And I guess the 9th British Brigade has really ceased to exist. They have lost two battalions in total. They have a grand total of three increments remaining in the other two battalions. Pretty rough. The French complete their turn with rally and um, readiness recovery. Not too much going on there, so we can just move on to our next chit pole. Despite that full draw cup, we really only have three action chits remaining. So we have our leaders. We can run our leaders around a little bit. I think the most significant movement of our leaders will be here with the French. Napoleon is stacked with the heavy cavalry, the fourth reserve cavalry, as well as the guard leaders activated. So they are going to return to their formations, which will also be within Napoleon's command span, and they'll be able to uh, get all their all their forces moving, especially the guard. That'll be important. So guard is down here, and the reserve cavalry is right there. So there they both are with their respective commands. And in a uh, range of Napoleon and ready to, to move when constructed. Next shit will be artillery. We don't have a grand battery yet. We don't have a howitzer deployed, so nothing to do there. Well, regroup. That's our last shit. We don't need to waste time. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and complete the regroup. So regroup. What happens to units that are out of command because they have no leaders left on the field? Can they regroup somewhere? I have Brunswick units here and one way back here. Should they be able to move together? Basically, I'm leaving them alone because they don't have anywhere to regroup to. 
it just seems kind of strange. They become this, uh, a, you know, a, an obstacle on the field. They may as well just retreat and be done with it. But with the end of regroup will come the end of our chit pull. The 1800 turn was really kind of quiet here at Lenny as the armies continued to shift in the face of the enemy. Not a lot of ground was gained, but maybe importantly we saw a big line of Prussian guns go up right here, just as the French are kind of driving for their last attack. I mean, this is the only open area. See how slow it is slogging through these, these towns and fields. So the French are putting a lot of stock in their ability to get through right here. Quatre Bras is becoming a little more hotly contested. That guard's gambit is actually on the brink of paying off. The French 6th uh, Division has been under fire continuously for many hours, and the losses are starting to tell. And truly, it overextended itself um, coming into this area here and now getting really blocked themselves in danger of being cut off. And the remnants may not be able to put up a, much of a fight against these guards. But this is the area of the field that is really of least importance in terms of strategic significance. As long as the French can hold the east side, they have a chance of exiting someone back toward Lenny and having a meaningful victory. And they likely can do that. We have about four hours of game time, well, game scale time remaining. So that'll be about 12 or 13 more turns. I don't know that the British are going to be able to make enough progress to win the battle here. It just seems like there's too much left for the French. But we're going to give it a hard go and see if we can get anything approaching a draw at least, but the command situation for the British is so dire. Um, the entire Brunswick contingent is leaderless, half of the 3rd Division over here is leaderless, that leaves it to the guards, uh, this kind of wrecked Dutch-Belgian division that's out here, and the wrecked 5th Reserve which has some remnants right here to do the rest of the damage. We'll continue to press advantages where possible. The French will likely set up some guns around this area just to try to protect it. If possible, they'll pull back the 6th Division, again trying to protect the east side of the field, and hold on for dear life. We'll check in again at the 1900 turn, see how things have progressed.